Hi everyone, this is Heather Lottenden from the Flourish Academy. This is episode 187. And before we dive into today's topic, don't forget, tonight is camera club at my home. It is a beautiful day and it is bring your child to camera club night. So everyone that comes to camera club is bringing their crew and we're gonna take photos of one another's children and just have fun. So I cannot wait to see you there. Hi Kim, I'm sorry you can't make it to camera club this evening. It's so pretty here. I know you have a session and that's more important. Okay, but I wanna, I wanna share with you this question that I received yesterday and this is from a friend and mentoring client of mine and she says, Heather, I'm having a bad day need some comforting words. I'm feeling very overwhelmed and discouraged. I feel maybe I'm not good enough to do this. Maybe I don't have the eye for photography. I see my friends who advertise my competition and I feel so bad about myself. Like I'm not good enough or I won't be able to get clients. I have no portfolio, only pictures of my child. I have nothing and I feel like I just can't and I feel like I just can't achieve the images I want. I'm afraid to even advertise for mini sessions in case they aren't good or don't book. I'm afraid I can't do it. I'm afraid to even book clients unless I know what I'm doing. I'm afraid they will come for a session and hate it. Did you ever feel this way sometimes when you first started? So I, I loved this question because I don't think that this person is alone. and. I asked her if I could talk about this on video and she agreed and said that I could even mention her name but I'm gonna leave her anonymous and she's just starting out obviously so she clearly has a lot of intrepidation there is a lot of fear in those worlds what if, words what if I'm not good enough or I can't make it I have a lot I want to talk about in regards to this subject but let's start uh, sometimes I don't even know where to start so I say to people well let's just start at the beginning if you are comparing yourself to others it is largely a mistake and here's why because you tend to look at the beginning of your journey and compare it to someone's middle or even end and that's just not fair I think it was Malcolm Gladwell or was it Seth Godin one of those guys I love and read all of the books that they produce said that you need about 10,000 hours of practice in any field to become an expert 10,000 hours or 10 years in any field to become an expert. So if you're just starting off out, you just can't expect yourself to be at that level. And that's okay. Many of us are impatient perfectionists, which is a deadly combination. Now, if you are looking at someone's work and you are comparing yourself, it, it's just not gonna end well because either one of two things is gonna happen. Number one, you're gonna feel like you're not good enough, like you could never be that good, and that's just gonna lead to self-doubt. Or number two, maybe you look at someone and think you're better than that person, which leads to pride. And neither one of these emotions are what I would classify as productive. <laughs> so it's not productive for you to compare yourself to others. Now, let me be clear, I wanna differentiate because if you are looking up to another photographer for inspiration, then that is completely different. If I look at someone's work and I think, oh my gosh, I wanna go pick up my camera because I think I can do that, that's inspiration. But if I look at someone's work and feel bad about myself, mm, that's comparison. Or if I look at someone's work and feel really good about myself compared to them, that's pride. So those are just not productive emotions. I wouldn't recommend you do it. I would recommend that you find a photographer in your niche or your field that you are most interested in, your genre I should say, that's not located in your area. Someone that is, you know, like the big name, the, the famous photographer. For me in wedding photography, that's Jerry Gohinas. I love him, I follow him, he inspires me, I look at his work, I wanna go pick up my camera and try it. I don't compare myself to him because I will never be him and that's okay. So you have to stop that train of thinking on comparison. It's just not a good place to be. Okay, in your message, you were just clearly, you were very down. It was very, you know, you said things like, I feel so bad about myself, I'm not good enough, how am I gonna get clients? Well, in order to gain confidence, you have to certainly practice learn, take some classes, work on your education, get better because 
competence, feeling competent in some area will lead to confidence and you'll start to feel better about it if you feel like you know what you're doing. But if you're brand new, you don't feel like you know what you're doing, of course you're not gonna be confident. How, how could you be? You haven't learned anything yet. And you, and you do have to struggle, you have to make mistakes, you have to fail, you have to have some bad exposures. I didn't realize that it was not a good idea to photograph an entire bridal party at F2 A until I did it. <laughs> I zoomed in and realized that no one was in focus except the bride and groom. You have to put in your time, you have to make those mistakes, and that's gonna be okay. Now, uh, you know, I wanna acknowledge that at some point everyone feels some sort of, you know, I'm not good enough. But you can allow yourself to feel that, and I'm sorry that happened to you, but I'm not gonna let you stay there. That's the kind of thing where you're like, okay, I'm down. I, you have to break that train of thinking, and Tony Robbins talks about this, changing your state. You have to change your state of mind, because what you focus on, you will feel, and what you focus on will grow. And what you focus on, your brain will look for ways to affirm or confirm your worst fears. So you have to be really careful about your thinking, what you're thinking about. You really have to control your thinking. So when you find yourself in this negative state of I don't feel good enough, you have to say, okay, I have to stop this thinking. I know that that's easier said than done. You just have to immediately change your environment. If I'm going in a bad direction with my thoughts towards my work, I will immediately either go outside or exercise or just do something different to take my mind off of it. Literally find a way to get your mind off of that just negative thinking because it will fester and it will grow and it's just not a good place to be. Again, nobody's perfect. You're going to feel these things, but you have to move on. Okay, so that said, another thing I want you to really think about here is that maybe this is not just about you. You're really focused on your own feelings, how you feel, and that message was riddled with I, 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 me, me, me. When really what we should be focusing on is how can we help or serve others. If you are in this business solely for your edification, you will be very disappointed. It is not about you, it is not about me, it is about other people that we are providing a service for. And every single photo you take, listen to me, every single photo you take for someone is a photo that they would not have had otherwise. And they will love that photo regardless of how perfect or imperfect it may be. Whether the composition is great or the settings were awesome, they have a photo that they wouldn't have otherwise that you created. This is not about you. I want you to start focusing on what you're providing to others. I want to get better so that I can do better for you. The books I read, the courses I take, the certifications I go after are never for me. I look at the areas where my clients struggle the most and that's where I choose to focus my energy learning so that I can better mentor, coach, teach, inspire, encourage other women. That's what I'm focused on. Do I benefit with that skill set? Absolutely. But that's never my focus. I wake up every day, how can I be a servant? Who can I serve? How can I help them? You have to, when you start thinking about yourself and it's just all me, 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 it's just this horrible cycle that will just weigh you down. I want you to right now, right now, sit up. Your posture, sit up. I can see some of you like this, you know, listening. Yeah, she's right, I need to work on this. Sit up, put your shoulders back and think about what you're doing to help and serve others. It is not about you. It's providing a service that somebody may or may not be willing to pay for. We will find the right clients for you at the right time. You have to practice, you have to learn, you have to grow, you have to struggle, you have to focus on others. I mean, anything in life, I mean, if you really focus on yourself in any area, you will ultimately, ultimately be miserable. You will find that when you serve and give and put yourself out there to others, you start to think about yourself a lot less and you're focused on others and you will be so much happier. When we are self-focused, we are not happy. It is just not a good place to be. You start feeling sorry for yourself or you have this negative thinking or it's just me, 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 and it's, it's not gonna serve you. You have to think, 
how can I focus on serving and helping others? Uh, it just it just doesn't work. I'm trying to think of some examples that I have, but I I, I provide a lot of resources and classes and um, you know community service things that I do that I love. And I am so busy with those things. I am so, we have camera club tonight. Um, I'm about to jump on another call. I had a call this morning. I'm mentoring, I'm helping, I'm teaching every minute of every day. I am so focused on other people. Uh, I think about myself much less. And that is a good thing. <laughs> Trust me, because if I thought about myself too much, I would probably self-destruct. That That's what happens to people. Oh, thank you, Laura. Thank you guys for saying so. Thank you. I appreciate it. I appreciate your feedback. I just want you to remember that when you're feeling down, you're not alone, number one. Number two, don't compare yourself to others. It usually doesn't end well. Find inspiration. And number three, really, really start to focus on why you are doing this. If you're in it for yourself, it's not going to work. You have to find a bigger reason why you're doing something. I highly recommend Simon Sinek's TED Talk or his book, which is called Start With Why. It gets you really focused on others. Remember, this is not about I, 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 me, me, me. It's not about you, it's about our clients. It's about how can we serve someone today? How can I help someone? How can I understand someone's issue and better provide for them? This is a case in point. I got your message yesterday and I've been thinking about it nonstop. How can I help her? What are the words I can say? How can I encourage or inspire her or lead her to feel better about the beginning of her journey? Which is hard, it's going to be hard. I just want you to sit up straight Take pride in what you're doing and know that you can learn anything. I have a friend I was talking with uh, yesterday, two days ago, and she homeschools her daughter. And she says when her daughter says something like, I'm not good at math, I'm not good at this, I'm not good at that, she makes her add the word yet to the end of her sentence. So that when she says, I'm not good at math, her mom will say, what? What's that? And she'll say, I'm not good at math yet. Okay, so you're not good at photography yet. You're not good at business yet because you haven't learned it. How, how would you expect to do that? I mean, I look at athletes. There are certainly athletes who have innate talent. They're just born athletes. They're born um, with a basketball in their hand or a golf club or with skis on their feet. They're just innately talented. But there are people that they compete against that aren't, that weren't born with those gifts. Some people have them, some people don't, but they can still compete. Why? Because they work hard and they don't let self-doubt stop them. They train, they train, they learn, they learn, and they know in um, something like skiing or ice skating, you're, you're gonna fall. You're gonna fall and you're gonna get back up and you're gonna try again, but you have to fall in order to learn and you have to practice in order to get better. You can't have this like mental shutdown straight out of the gate, <laughs> you're never gonna get started. So acknowledge the feelings. Yeah, this is a bummer. I'm gonna give you about 2.3 seconds to do that and I'm gonna tell you get up and put your shoulders back and just keep marching forward. I hope that you found this useful. I'll see you in the next video.